That's Jamie LaFountain in the number 20. The one car is Jake Branham. The 29, the point leader is Nick Haywood. And the 11 at the back is Kevin Broderick. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out as another Saturday night of short track racing action is kicked off at the Big A as they race side by side off of turn number two. The 98 sticks the nose out in front. Hernandez has the nose out in front. It's Pelkey on the top trying to fight his way back. Lucier is there on the inside in the third spot right now. Rico Hernandez is going to lead lap number one. He, he elects to uh, take that 98 down to the bottom line. Washes up the track a little bit off the second turn. The four of Keith Pelkey just didn't have a good corner off of turn number two. He lost a couple of car lengths, and then now the 98 is pulling away from the four, but here comes the 28 down on the inside. That's Eric Lossier. Lossier in the 28 has a peak down on the inside in turn number two. Can't get it to stick down on the bottom. The right rear kicks out. Now he's got a good run down the back stretch into turn number three, pulls even. Has to get on the binders though as he was hot down on the very inside of the turn. And Rico Hernandez is going to be able to hold him off one more time. Good racing mid-pack as Nick Haywood is pinned down on the inside trying to find a way by the 0-3 of Speedy Brissett. He's now down to the inside as Lossier takes the lead in the number 28 car. Remember only the top five pick up handicap. You finish in the top five, you'll start no worse than 10th. And right now, Nick Haywood has that fifth spot. Well, there was just contact between the 0-3 of Speedy Brissett and the 29 of Nick Haywood. Haywood was able to hang on to that car, though. Now the battle heats up to the third spot. The four on top, the 20 on the bottom. LaFountain in the number 20. Looks down to the inside. Tries to get it to stick off the fourth turn. Does get it to stick, and he'll take the three spot away at the line. Damian LaFountain in the Marshall Holmes number 20 has one win this season. As he works his uh, number 20 car into the third spot, back to fourth is the four of Keith Pelkey. In the fifth and final qualified spot belongs to the 29 and Nick Haywood at the uh, two to go mark. Two laps to go for the Sportsman Modified Division and it's the 28 of Eric Lossier with a very comfortable lead out in front. Lossier doing double duty tonight. He's supposed to do double duty for the rest of the season. This orange car, that, or uh, orange numeral, a numeral car, Easy for me to say that you see will be a Sportsman modified car and the car with the red numerals will be his modified car for the rest of the season. One more corner to go for Eric Lossier. Here he comes. He wins the first qualifier. Second's going to go to Rico Hernandez. Third, Jamie LaFountain. Fourth is going to go to the four just by inches of Keith Pelkey. And, the and now he's going to get on it. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. Good even start there at the line. They play bumper tag into turn number one. A hole opens up down on the bottom. Aubin tries to fill it. He can't do it. Three wide already is Finney down on the bottom. He wisely backs out of that. On the top of the racetrack, Chris Susi takes the lead from the top. He'll lead the first lap. And they're still slicing and dicing for position behind. Aubin in the number seven is staying down on the bottom trying to find a way by. It's Lonnie Rivers up on the top in the R7. He's pulled even into turn number three. Remington down on the bottom. Rivers sticks the nose out in front. Halfway through the corner, Rivers still leads, and then off the uh, fourth turn, Rivers takes the number two spot away. Now Aubin elects to go up to the top lane with his number seven car, as Remington stays down on the bottom. Aubin has a good run into turn number three, is able to drive it deep, but the 54 pushed up the track a little bit. He had to get on the binders, and that uh, slowed his progress up on the top of the racetrack. Mike Finney looking to try and uh, find a way by the 46 and the 14 cars. Finney is working down on the bottom of the racetrack. A little sideways off the second turn. He had to get on the binders as well to avoid pushing up into the 14 of John Mike Brissett. But he's able to get into the fifth and final qualified spot at the halfway point. Little Joe Daniels in the 46 works down along the inside of the track. Oh, look out. Cody Aubin sent the 54 around. Remington goes spinning into the infield, and we have a yellow flag. I'm at the line. Remember, top five qualify. There are eight cars running on the speedway. You need to be in the top five to qualify for your handicap. They play bumper tag as they come to the start. Chris Susi gets on it now. Green, flag is out. Lonnie Rivers with a good restart is right there on the back bumper. Off of turn number two. Good run for the 24 car. Look at Mike Finney slingshot down to the bottom of the 69. Finney goes to fourth down on the inside with that 69 car. The 46 of Joe Daniels is back to fifth. Bonnie Rivers looking for a way by in that R7 car. That car is just not handling really well in the second turn. The 24 is able to pull away. Through turns three and four, Rivers is able to close the gap and get right on the back bumper. 
two laps to go for the 24 of Susie, but he wanted two, he just can't get there. In turn number two, he can't get off the corner well. That car slides out on him a little bit. It snaps to the right. And Lonnie just can't get it done in turn number two. If he's going to make the pass, it's got to be here in three and four when that car is strong. White flag is out one more time around for the 24 of Susie. Rivers again looks down to the inside, but just can't get a run. The 24 pulls away off the second turn. Here they go this time into turn number three. It's Susie in the lead. Rivers trying to take it away. For the final time off the fourth turn, Susie wins. Rivers second, third off, and fourth is going to go to the 69 of Finney. And the fifth and final qualified spot goes to Joe Daniels. Bud Light Platinum number 54, that's Jason Chris. Outside the 78 is Michael Wright. And the final row on the field, the 50 is Rick Welch, that's the Prime Link car. And outside Welch in the 26, it's Matty Brusso. Here they come off the fourth turn, green. Flag is out for the mini mods and they're already three wide at the strike. Josh Laporte looking to find a way through down on the inside, wisely backed out of that move. Uh-oh, look out, 70, oh boy. The 78 went around, right went around, and then Welch got him. That might have been the slowest wreck all year. Well, it... it We're going to go green. That, uh, We're not gonna let terrain vehicle isn't going to race. We're not going to let that one go at the back? No. Darn it. <laughs> Slow pace out of the fourth turn. Now they get on it. Green flag is out. Three wide again down the front stretch. Dale O'Neill uh, goes from the top of the racetrack all the way down to the inside, looking down underneath the 45B of Laporte. They're side by side for the lead down the back stretch. The 69 of Lavarnway sticks the nose out in front. Now the 22B sticks the nose out in front. They're slot car racing through turns three and four. Coming off of the fourth turn with the lead is going to be the 22B of Pete Blaney. The battle for second is side by side now. The 16 of O'Neill got uh, shot from the rear end. He was sideways. What? He was sideways in one and two. That sounds like he would need a trip to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> As they race in turn number three, the six of Tyson Drown takes the second spot away. Up on the top of the racetrack, it's the 69 of Lavarnway giving him a bit of a bump draft down the front stretch. The 16 of Dale O'Neill is down on the inside. A couple of cars sideways mid-pack, the 41 and 45B. They're able to keep it going, and we stay under green. The 22 of Chad Collins works through the middle of the racetrack. He gets around the 88 of Dave Demore. The 45B of Laporte is back on patrol, though, as he's looking to move back towards the front. Halfway in qualifier number one for the mini mods. Seven qualify. And right now, it's the 22B of Blaney in first. O'Neill is second. Third is the six of Drown. Fourth is Lavarnway. Fifth is the 54 of Chris. Sixth is LaFountain in seventh. The seventh and final qualified spot belongs to Chad Collins in the number 22. Two laps to go. Dale O'Neill's uh, chasing down that 22B car. Blaney pushes in turn number two. O'Neill down to the inside. Blaney shuts the door down the back stretch. O'Neill's going to keep it down to the inside. His car has been really good this season down on the bottom of the racetrack. It sticks off the fourth turn. White flag is out. Pete Blaney leads it by about a car line. O'Neill is there, though. Uh -oh. He pulls even in turn number two. And this could be bad news for Pete Blaney. Not could be. <laughs> side by side, although Blaney sticks the nose out in front in turn number three. Eh. O'Neill gets it to stick down on the bottom of the racetrack. Blaney washes up the racetrack, and O'Neill's going to win qualifier number one. Blaney is second. Third goes to Chris. Fourth of Arnway. Fifth is Brown. Sixth is Chad. Goes back on the inside. Last week's winner, the 77 of Chris Clark. Outside the nine car is Neil Martin. And shotgun on the field. The 79 is Jay LaGrave. All right, ready to go. Here they come off the fourth turn. Seven qualified. Green. Flag is out. And they're working around a couple of slow cars. They part the pizza wagon left and right. And down the back stretch, the leader is the 66 of Robert Foley. It's the three of signs on the bottom. He's got the nose there. Pushes a little bit inside to turn number three. And that allows the 66 to take the lead. He leads lap number one. Here comes Keith Farrow on the top of the racetrack, making that car skinny. Rob Clark is down on the bottom in the number 14. They're going to go three wide off the second turn, likely going to part that three car left and right. The 14 down on the bottom, the 20K on the top. And the 14 of Clark ends up with a third spot. And the 20K is in the second spot. They're nearly going to be three wide now for the lead when they get the turn number one, and they are. 
Three wide to the lead. The 14 down on the bottom. 20K in the middle. And the 66 on the top. How about five cars? Five, <laughs> five cars now battle for the lead. <laughs> As there's three more coming right up behind them that could likely take that spot away as well. You know, if they could race 60 laps just like this, we'd be in for a heck of a night. Uh oh. Oh boy, look out. Eric Rio with a great save. Hang on to it, Eric. Watch out for that. Look tire. out! Uh oh. Yellow flag, I think. Yep. Yellow flag. Well, that was a good save initially. On the 20K and the 66 of Robert Foley. The second row, the four is Chris LeVere, and the three is Rob Sines. Here they come, off the fourth turn, green flag is back out in qualifier number two for the Mini Modified. Kane Favreau takes the lead in the 20K. Chris LeVere looking to move through down on the inside. Talked to Chris earlier, and he said the top of the racetrack still his favorite line. Here comes Rob Sines looking to make it three wide, backs out of it. Chris LeVere said the top is where he wants to put that car. That's where he's had his most success here at Airborne Speedway. He runs in second place right now with that number four car. Robert Foley is third. Rob Clark looking to move back through as they're three wide down the back stretch for the fourth spot. It's Clark in the 14 in the middle. He has to back out of that because he doesn't have room. Now he gets back in the throttle midway through the corner and uh, he's able to get around the 86 of Amber Turner. Two laps to go in this one. It's Clark down on the bottom. He gets around sides now for the fourth spot. Top seven are qualified in this. So the uh, final car that is qualified is the 79 of Jay LaGrave. And LaGrave started at the tail end of the field. Checkered flag is out. 20K of King Favreau wins. Second's going to go to the fourth, Chris LeVere. Third to Robert Foley. Fourth to three. Third Eagle Field Ford number four for Shazie's Leon Gagno. In the final row of the M Corps Services 90 70s from Kingsbury, New York. That is Chris Vernold starting shotgun of the field, 10th on the grid. From Bloomingdale, New York, the Liquor and Wine Warehouse, double nickel for Matt Woodrow. That's the field, 10 strong, green flag is out. The Modifieds work off into turns one and two, and it is Mike Riel out front. As they go down the back stretch, Riel shows the way. Top six qualify for handicap. Finish in the top six, you'll start in the top 12. Outside the top six, you're coming from the back. And Bertio was really working the right rear, coming off of turn number four, lifting that left front tire right off the surface. Running in second, here comes Dupree. Dupree muscles to the inside of Chris K.A. He'll shoot to third. K.A. on the outside, running in the fourth spot as they work off the fourth turn down the line. Again, Patrick Dupree was picking up that left front tire right off the racing surface. Mueller's moving. Mueller down on the inside, running in the fourth spot as he takes it away from Chris K.A. K.A. still stuck on the outside line. He's running in fifth, and Andy Haywood is into the sixth spot. Remember, top six to pick up handicap. Right now, Andy Haywood has that position. Max Vien is on the outside looking in. He's seventh. Chris Vernold in the 97 running in the eighth spot. Now Leon Gagno has eighth on the outside. Three cars battling for position there. Wheel to wheel. They race now for the fifth spot. Here comes Andy Haywood underneath the number 18 of Chris K.A. That puts K.A. in the hot seat. He's back to the sixth position. Leon Gagno working the rim of the racetrack in one and two. He got muscle. Oh, K.A.'s off the pace. K.A. breaks off turn number two. Max Vienne avoids him darting to the outside. Other cars dive down to the inside. It's going to bring out a yellow flag. Bertiome with the JM Racing 1 on the outside as Riel will set the pace for the Plattsburgh Radiator 0-2. Here they come off 4. They're on the hammer down the line. Oh, look out. Bertiome darted to the right. It looked like he was almost headed right into the wall at the drop of the green flag. Riel is fine off of turn number 2. Now off the pace is Vernal. The 97 is off the pace. He may have a problem on the right front of his machine. He takes the right-hand turn back to the garage area. We'll stay under green. Leon Gagno, he gets past the 25 of Max Vn, and so doing, the left rear corner paddle of uh, Gagno's car made contact with the right front of Vn. Here comes Patrick Dupree. Dupree flying to the front. He's into second, looking to make a move on Mike Riel for the lead. Riel shows the way down the line. Mike Riel leading into one and two. Pat Dupree hugging the inside off of turn number two. A good battle for third. Give it to Mueller in the 19. He goes to third. Fourth is now Bertiome. Leon Gagno has that fifth spot. Max Vienne's going to have to pass him to pick up handicap as uh, Dupree darted to the outside off the fourth turn. Tried to get on it, but it didn't stick for him. He didn't get much power coming off the fourth turn, and that allowed Mike Riel to get away. Jesse Mueller now chasing down the 24. Mueller goes to the outside. Here comes Mueller trying to go from third to the lead as they come down the front stretch. He's to second. Jesse Mueller's going to work the rim in a one and two. Here comes Mueller to the outside of Mike Rio for the lead off turn two. They work down the back stretch. 
Mike Rio leading into three and four. Now Mueller sticks the nose out in front. Mueller powers around on the outside. Here he comes down the front stretch. Right flag is out for Mueller. Jesse Mueller takes the lead away from Mike Rio. He'll still, still work the rim off of turn number two. Leon Gagno has gone to fifth. Andy Haywood back to sixth. Max Vienne still trying to chase him down. Checkered flag is out this time. Jesse Mueller gets it done. Second to Mike Rio, third to Pat Dupree, fourth Pierre Vertio, fifth goes to Leon Gagno, sixth to Andy Haywood. Seventh practice, he's on board the X. Aaron is from Champlain. Todd Stone from Middlebury in the 1X. The 16 from Teresa, New York, that is Lance Willicks, who runs regularly at Evans Mills as well as Mohawk International Raceway. And shotgun on the field, Eric Lossier in the Lossier Masonry, number 28. The green flag is out, and Foley on the outside going for the lead. Craig Rio hanging on to that lead down the back stretch into turns three and four. Foley again goes up to the top. Rio down on the inside as they dice for the lead. Down the line, it's Foley by a foot. Foley on the outside had the lead. Craig Rio working a middle line. Here comes Andy Lindemann. Lindemann to the inside of Craig Rio down the back stretch going to three. Lindemann coming through. He'll grab second. Craig Rio trying to fight back on the outside. Can't get into it as quickly as he'd like to. And he'll fall to that third spot. Mike Wells running it fourth. Fifth is Roger Labreche. Todd Stone is in the sixth. Remember, top six cars. Pick up handicap. They will start inside the top 12 come feature event time. 30 laps tonight, the feature distance for the Mott Squad. And the leader is falling. Second is the three of Lindemann. And it is Craig Rio with a CO2. Mike Wells in the 76 running it fourth. And here comes the defending track champion and point leader. Todd Stone is running in the fifth spot, sizing up the 76, looking to make a move off of turn number four. Roger Labreche running in the sixth position. That is the final transfer spot for Handicap. Lance Willicks is in that number 16 machine. That is a car that they run regularly on the dirt at the Mohawk International Raceway. And we'll keep an eye on Willicks because he is picking that left front tire right up off the racing surface off of both turns two and four. And if you're a regular here at Airborne, we've seen that setup before. It usually goes for about 15 laps and then the right rear tire starts to go to mush. So we'll see how that plays out for Willicks in number 16. His first time racing here at Airborne with that number 16 machine. And right now he is outside of the top six. He is running in the eighth spot. Todd Stone goes past the CO2 of Craig Riel. He'll take third. Riel back to fourth now. Mike Wells is fifth. Roger Labreche is sixth. Seventh is Richard Tesser. Eighth is Lance Willicks in the number 16. And the ninth is Aaron Bartomey with the X machine. Out front, George Foley in the 34, and he is growing the lead. The lead is about half the front stretch over the three of Andy Lindemann. The one X of Todd Stone in the third spot. Craig Riel fourth, Mike Wells, then Roger Labreche. Those cars in the top six. Richard Tesser would like to throw a big anchor out, slow down that 100 that's in front of him, but he can't uh, reel him in at this point, and the white flag is out. It looks like those are the six cars that are going to be in line to qualify for handicap in the feature. Here comes Foley through three and four. Foley now working on the front stretch. Checkered flag is out, and he's going to win it. George Foley wins comfortably qualifier two. Second goes to Lindemann, third to Stone. Fourth to Craig Riel, fifth to Wells, sixth to Roger Labreche. Seventh to Richard Tesser, eighth to Lance. Two weeks ago, second last week. He'll start seventh. Outside of him, it is the seven for Nick Lagoy. He is from Morrisonville, and shotgun on the field is Jim McKiernan. He is from Mariah. The nine machines take the green flag. Qualifier number one for the limited late models. Five cars will pick up handicap. Start inside the top 10, so you want to be inside the top five. Dave Paya shows the way with the 68. Bucko Branham on the outside is going to go to the second spot. Casey St. Clair sliding backwards in the 56 is third. He's about to be fourth. As Robin Wood is at his door on the outside. He will fly past. He'll go to the third spot. Casey is back to position number four. And here comes Nick Lagoy, who would like to move him back one more spot. Bucko Branham eyeing the lead. He's in turn number four down to the inside of the racetrack. Dave Paya on the outside. They'll drag race down the line, and it's just about that even if the strike might have been Paya by inches. But by the time they come around next time, I think we'll see the number 20 in the lead. Buck O'Branham off of turn number two to the point. The 61 of Robin Wood is going to follow that inside line. Dave Paya on the outside, sliding back to third now as they work off of the fourth turn. Nick Lagoy is running in the fourth spot. The fifth position is now Larry Underwood. Just outside the top five, that's where you want to be. 
inside the top five. Right now, Dylan Paye is in the sixth spot, but he's challenging Larry Underwood at the moment in turn number three, trying to take that fifth spot away. Side-by-side -side racing for third. Nick Lavoy trying to come through. Jim McKiernan and the 86 of Mike Shagnon spin over in turn number four, and that is going to bring out a, a hit to the fourth spot. We'll see if Dave Paye can hook onto the back bumper of Buck O'Branham and try to maintain his third position. All right, here they come into turn number four. Down the front stretch, there's the green flag. Robin Wood gets a good restart on the outside line. Let's see if he can use the top of the racetrack to drive away. Nick Lagoy is thinking about three wide, maybe down to the inside, can't get there. Robin Wood has the nose out in front for the lead. Branham drives it deep into turn number three. They're still side by side. Oh, there goes the spin. The 0-7 to Dylan Paye spins around in turn number four. Let's see if Dylan can get it rolling again. The yellow flag has been displayed. It wouldn't uh, surprise me at all to see the 20 and the 61 run side by side down uh, the stretch in the remainder of this qualifier. There's the green flag. Branham down on the inside, Wood on the outside. Oh, he gets a good run off turn number two. Bucko seemed to tiptoe a little bit through the second turn. He got real low into turn number two. And the car seemed to push up the racetrack. Nick Lagoy lets him know he's right behind him. He uses the chrome horn in that seven New York. He sits in the third spot. The 61 of Robin Wood takes the lead from the outside. Bucko Branham in car number 20 pushes in the second turn to the top of the racetrack. He's in the second spot. Nick Lagoy working in third in the seventh. Dave Paya in the 73 of Larry Underwood running side by side for the fourth position. And right behind them trying to get into the top five is Dylan Paya. The 73 of Underwood sliding in turns one and two. Paya gets the nose underneath. Now he's sideways off of the second turn down the back stretch. And Paya is going to make that move to the outside now. Trying to get to the outside of Dave Paya is Dylan Paya. Watch your vowels. The leader, Robin Wood, chasing him down though is Buck O'Branham. He's cut into the deficit. It's now about three car lengths off of turn number two. Then a big gap back to Nick Lagoy in the seven. Larry Underwood's in a safe spot right now in fourth. The guy feeling some heat is the 68 of Dave Paya as Dylan Paya is around him on the outside to grab fifth. Paya in the 68, Paya in the 07 goes to fifth. Here comes Robin Wood. Buck O'Branham is closed to two car links. So they work off a of turn number four, and the checkered flag is out this time for Robin Wood. Buck O'Branham is second, third, Nick Lagoy, fourth to Larry Underwood, fifth to the 07 of Dylan Paye. The 18, the Taylor Randall sponsored car from Morrisonville, that is Sean Duquette. Row four on the inside from Moores in the number 19 machine, that is second place point man Jamie Begor. He's got two wins this year. And starting shotgun in the field, eighth on the grid is the number 75, the night automotive machine for Plattsburgh's Cody Myers. All right, they're racing off in turns one and two, and it's Dave Raptoy from the outside going for the lead. Danny Sullivan trying to go with him on the outside line. He'll move to second as Chris Frenier slides back into the third position. It's a traffic jam right behind those three cars. And Brent Jarvis is in the middle. Down on the inside, it's the four of Brandon Atkins. On the outside, it's the 18 of Sean Duquette. And trying to find a way around all of them is the 19 of Jamie Begor. Here comes the three of Sullivan bidding for the lead in turn number three. Danny Sullivan's down to the inside of Dave Raptoy in the number 21, and the three car will have the lead at the line. Danny Sullivan shows the way. The 21 of Dave Raptoy is second. Third, it is Brent Jarvis. Here comes the 93 on the outside, trying to get a good run, but he got loose off the second turn. Sean Duquette, nice move to thread the needle. He'll dive down to the inside. Oh, there goes Cody Myers in the 75. He was by himself at the back of the pack, and he goes for a spin. That is going to bring out the yellow. And Dave Raptoy is on the outside. It's the three and the 21, ready to set the pace off of turn number four and bring him down the front stretch to the green flag. There it is, and they're racing off towards turn number one. Danny Sullivan in the three, powers off of turn number two, and he's already got a two, make it three car length advantage ahead of Dave Raptoy's 21 machine. Maybe Begor's working the top of the racetrack as Brent Jarvis is trying to get around to the, uh, the 93 of Chris Frenier to grab third, and now Begor's gonna stay out there. And if he can follow Jarvis, he'll get the uh, fourth spot eventually. That'll push Chris, Chris Frenier back to fifth. And the 18 of Sean Duquette snooker down on the inside as the 93 is sideways. Now Duquette is able to find room underneath him. He'll go to fifth. Back to the, oh, look out. Duquette too hot into the turn. He runs over the back of the 19 of Jamie Beekwar. That's going to bring out a yellow flag. Duquette was trying to hang on to his position. Both going to get into the top five, and they should be able to pick up their handicap with five laps still to run. All right, here they come off of turn number four. They come down the line, and the green flag is back out. 
Danny Sullivan, a three. Is that car has just been getting better and better throughout the season. He is going to pull away off turn number two. Dave Raptoy is running in the second spot. In third, it's Brent Jarvis in the 28. The Chris Frenier, 93, is on the outside. Jamie Begor's moved to fifth in the 19 car. He's going to think about a three-wide move. He'll come down the front stretch and go three-wide into turn number one. They tiptoe three-wide through the first turn. Begor is going to get the third spot. Jarvis in fourth. Frenier with him on the outside, though. Frenier's got the fourth spot now down the back stretch. Now Jarvis goes into the fourth position. Sean Ducat waiting for a hole to open up, and then maybe he'll pounce and try to get back into the top five. Out front is Danny Sullivan. Dave Raptoy running in the second position. Jamie Begor third. Brent Jarvis is fourth. And now over in turn number two, Sean Duquette will get that fifth position away from the 93 of Chris Frenier, who goes back to sixth. Seventh is Cody Myers in the number 75. Two laps to go for Dan Sullivan. Jamie Begor looking to the inside of the 21 of Dave Raptoy in turns one and two. Uh, the 19 of Bigor working a higher line off the second turn. They are running door to door down the backstretch. Bigor coming through on the inside. He'll eventually work to second. And a white flag out for Danny Sullivan. Sullivan leading by half the backstretch over Jamie Bigor in second. Third, Dave Raptoy in the 21. Brent Jarvis is fourth of the 28. And here comes Sean Duquette trying to grab that fourth position. Checkered flag is out. Danny Sullivan's going to win. Second will be Bigor in the 19. Third, Raptor in the 21. Fourth is Sean Duquette. Fifth is Brent Jarvis. Sixth through Bordeaux. Eight cars set to run. Top five will pick up handicap. Here they come off of turn number four down the line. And there is the green flag. The 357, Curtis Seymour. The 17 of Richie Turner says three wide. It's going to work for me. Down the back stretch, still three wide, going into turn number three. Rob Favreau, the meat and the sandwich, getting a little gun shy, and he's going to back out of it. That's going to allow Richie Turner to have the lead. Probably a smart move from Rob to not really force the issue on the first lap of the qualifier. Curtis Seymour pushed in turns one and two. That sends him up to the top of the racetrack. Josh Terry saw a hole that he tried to take advantage of. Couldn't quite get there in time. H2O could, though. He's down on the inside, and Rob Gordon's coming through to third. Favreau right up towards the wall off of turn number four. Hanging on to second. Rob Gordon with the premier paving H2O well drilling machine is in the third spot, and he's trying to find position to the inside of the 22. Here comes the 43. The 43 of Josh Terry. That is the Brookfield excavation car trying to get a position on the H2O of Rob Gordon. But Gordon is able to hold him up. Richie Turner in the 17. He started towards the front in his qualifier. He was supposed to be seventh on the starting grid, but we had one car elect to start at the, actually two cars that were on the inside groove, decided to start at the back of the pack, and that moved the inside line, the cars that were in the third and fourth row, up towards the front. So you had the 17, instead of starting seventh in this qualifier, move all the way up to third, and he took the lead on the first lap over in turns three and four, and Right now, his closest competition just getting smaller and smaller in the rear view. The H2O of Rob Gordon is in that second spot. It's a good battle for second. The 43 of Josh Terry is looking to the inside of the H2O. The 22 of Rob, Rob Favreau is right in the mix as well. Gordon always likes to work the rim of the racetrack, in particular turns one and two. That's where he is down the back stretch. Josh Terry is about a car length and a half off the back bumper. He drives it deep into the third turn. Favreau in the 22 behind him, and then it's Andrew Bordeaux, that 08 car as the fifth and final transfer spot for Handicap. Andrew Bordeaux likely would start towards the front of the field uh, come feature event time. Richie Turner in the 17. It's a walk in the park for the point leader in this division. Richie Turner is also a three-time winner. He'd like to make it four tonight. He is leading by half the backstretch. We're seeing a dueling version of race lines around the track between the H2O and the 43. Robert Gordon's outside line has prevailed to this point. Let's see if Josh Terry has a move. Does he have a card to play on the final uh, lap off of turn number four? Richie Turner wins. They come down the line. It's still going to be Gordon. By half a car link, Josh Terry is third. Fourth goes to Rob Favreau. Fifth goes to Andrew Bordeaux. Sixth goes to Curtis C. Who is in the 23. Then it is the 44 of Tyler Terry. On the outside, Big Daddy Don Franklin's in the 69. There's Ryan Booten in the 28. The 11 of Lance Raptoy. The 5 of Mark Karen. The 70. Uh, Jason McClatchy, who is the winningest driver in this division, picked up his fourth win last Saturday. 
three wide on the opening lap, down the back stretch for the lead. And on the outside, it's John Booten in the 23. The seven of LeClaire in the middle, the 44 of Tyler Terry down on the inside. They tiptoe off a of four down the line, it's John Booten. A 44 of Tyler Terry still there on the inside though. John tries to power to the top of turn two and drive away. Oh, oh the 44 got a real good run on the inside of turn number two and he's got his nose underneath. John Booten has the lead. Tyler Terry on the inside line trying to come through down the front stretch as they power down the line. It's still John Booten by three feet. The 23 car showing the way. The 44 car though chugging off of turn number two. And he is trying to draw even down the back stretch into three. Side by side racing for the top six spots. You've got the 44 and the 23 for the lead. Right behind them, it is Ryan Booten trying to grab third away from Josh LeClaire in the seventh. That time at the line, it was still the 23 by inches. The 44 of Tyler Terry, just about even in turn number two. The 23 of John Booten sticks his nose out in front down the back stretch going to three and four. But the 44 really has been getting a good run down on the inside off of turn number four. They come back to the line halfway in the qualifier. And it's the 23 of John Booten that time by five feet. Ryan Booten, brother of John, works in the third spot. Jason McClatchy up to four. Oh, McClatchy's in trouble. He's off the pace. The 11 of Lance Raptoy has no place to go. He has to dive into the infield to avoid the 70 who's trying to come down into the infield. Uh, Lance Raptoy really gets stuckered on that one. He goes all the way to the back of the pack as the McClatchy 70 just shut down. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead continues. It is the 23 of John Booten still showing the way. The 44 of Tyler Terry is on the inside. Ryan Booten right there in third, waiting to see how it plays out in front of him. And the battle for the fourth spot, Don Franklin on the inside. The big daddy in the 69 is fourth to the line. Less than two laps to go for the 44 of Tyler Terry. The 23 of John Booten leading by about three feet down the back stretch, going to three and four. Booten still shows the way. Tyler Terry still trying to make that inside line work. Ryan Booten right behind Tyler Terry, and the white flag is out. This could be an Alcoa finish. If you're a longtime NFL fan, you know what that means. Here comes the 23 of John Booten on the outside. The 44 of Tyler Terry still there. They work it at turns three and four. What type of run is the 44 going to get off the fourth turn? John Booten goes up to the top of the wall. Here they come. Drag race for the win. Down to the stripe. It's John Booten holding on for the win. Tyler Terry is second. Third goes to Ryan Booten. Fourth goes to Big Daddy Don Franklin. To his outside, it's the four of Keith Pelkey. Slow pace set by Hernandez in that number 98. Now he gets on it. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green. Flag is out. And the Sportsman Autosides are underway for their 25 lap feature. It is Hernandez in the 98 taking the lead down on the inside. A couple of cars sideways off of turn number two. Good save by Susie in the 24. Cody Abin in the seven looks to get that car down to the inside. Tries to find room inside of the 28 of Eric Lossier. And he's finally able to get the car down to the inside. Keith Pelkey in the four. Look down to the inside. Look out. The point leader is sideways and turns one and two. He's able to save it. Quick yellow flag there as the yellow flag comes out. It's starting to go sideways. Nick had made a pretty good save. He doesn't, there's something wrong with the car. He's gonna take the right-hand turn. He's, he doesn't like the feel of that race car. He is headed back to the garage area. Time. Rico again, slow pace. Now he is uh, gonna get on it. Out of the fourth turn, the green flag is back out, but a good restart on top of the racetrack for Keith Pelkey. His teammate Cody Abin trying to uh, bump draft him and push him down on the bottom line. That doesn't work. Here comes Eric Lossier thinking three wide. He's going to make that car real skinny. And he got on the binders to avoid washing up into the floor. But a nice job to uh, make that 28 car fit through the middle. And he takes the second spot away from the 98 of Rico Hernandez. Moving on the top is now Susie in the 24. Lonnie Rivers looks to uh, join him. Rivers moves on the top of the racetrack. Rivers goes from seventh to fourth in a matter of the backstretch. And he is sitting comfortably right now in that four spot, looking to challenge the 24 of Susie as Susie's pinned down to the bottom lane. Another Susie in the 24 wants to go down to the bottom. Another car to keep an eye on is Mike Finney. Here he comes way down to the inside, three wide going to turn number three. Mike Finney's on the move in the 69. Keep an eye on him as he approaches the top five. Finney has pressed the go button in the number 69 car. He's working down on the very bottom of the racetrack. His car is able to work there. Many cars in this division like to work a middle to top groove. Finney has been one of the guys that has been able to figure out the very bottom of the racetrack. It uses that right rear tire up a little bit more, but if you can get it to stick, it will work out for you. 
Nick Haywood in the 29 is pinned in the back of the pack. There's a car to his outside. There's a car in front of him. In fact, they run side by side in front of him. He is stuck in a traffic jam in that number 29. He's trying to find a way by. He's being patient right now, looking for a way by down to the inside. Eric Lozier is sliding backwards. He's gone from second, now back to fourth. First, first Chris Soucy, then Lonnie Rivers able to move underneath the 28. Lozier is sliding backwards as Mike Finney gets into the top five. He moves underneath Cody Aubin, seven. He's now fifth in the 69, and he's going for fourth, it looks like, into turns one and two. Out front, it is still Keith Pelkey in the number four car. Chris Soucy runs second. Third is Lonnie Rivers. Fourth is Eric Lozier and Mike Finney. The car on the move is up into the top five. Here he comes down on the inside now, challenging for the fourth place spot into turn number one. Lozier shuts the door a bit in turn number one, but pushes up the track in the middle of the corner. Here comes the 69 of Mike Finney through for the fourth spot. Finney to the fourth spot. If there were a yellow flag in this one, it would be very interesting to see the R7 of Lonnie Rivers, the 69 of Mike Finney. Both right on the back bumper of the four of Keith Pelkey. There goes the 54 of Tom Remington across the infield. He backs it into the infield, and he looks to get that car refired. And the yellow flag is going to come out. Four on the inside, the 24 on the top. These drivers both used to be the 24. Here they come. Green flag is back out. Good restart for Pelkey down on the bottom. Couple of cars sideways. You are the R7 and 28. They are able to hold on to it. Here comes the 24 of Susie. Susie looks to cross it over down to the bottom of the racetrack. Look at Finney. That move is stopped down on the bottom. Finney running on the top of the racetrack. He's to the outside of the R7 of Lonnie Rivers. Boy, they're playing bumper tag big time in the middle of the pack. Nick Hewitt's trying to muscle his way through. Meanwhile, three wide for the second spot. Rivers backs out of it, though, going into turn number three. Mike Finney in the 69 is already up to the second spot and challenging for the lead off the fourth turn. Finney looks down to the bottom. Elke holds him off, however. Finney in that 69 runs the bottom of the racetrack. Elke likes the top of the racetrack. Nick Haywood and Jake Branham are trying to fight through traffic in mid-pack. Branham's been pinned down on the bottom. Haywood's finally out on the top. Nick Haywood in that 29, now behind the 46 of Joe Daniels. Haywood down to the inside now. Has two cars running in front of him. Can't get around uh, right now. As the Huntley trucking one of Jake Branham is just riding contently down in the bottom lane. At the halfway point, Keith Belke shows the way. Perhaps Finney is just being patient in that 69, waiting for the four car to slip up. But he says it's time to go now in turn number three. That backs out of it. Midway through the corner, the four of Pelkey really pushes that car up uh, pretty hard in turn number four. Perhaps really working that right rear tire is Pelkey in the four car. The 69 of Finney is content down on the bottom of the racetrack. Looks to stick the nose down to the inside and then backs out of it. The R7 of Lonnie Rivers is closing in on the back bumper of Mike Finney. That may also tell you that Finney is waiting for the right time to get around. Finney in the 69, look down to the inside. Couldn't quite get it to stick that time. Joe Daniels in the 46 is moving on the inside. He gets around Cody Aubin, seven, and Nick Awood comes through also. They're running for about six through seven position. Mike Finney now in the 69 is pulled even and is gonna go to the lead down on the inside. Finney saw the opportunity coming off of four and going into one. And Mike Finney has driven his way to the lead on lap number 16. And uh, that could be good night unless we have a, a yellow flag or some type of mechanical failure on that number 69 car. The winning pass came off of turn number four going down the front stretch as that car was pretty dominant down on the bottom of the racetrack. Now the battle for second. It's Lonnie Rivers in the R7 on the inside and the four Pelkey on the top. Rivers trying to make that same move that he watched the 69 of Finney make. Rivers down on the bottom, can't get it to stick in turn number two, but a good run down the back stretch and into number three. Side by side are the seven and the four. Give the position to Lonnie Rivers down on the inside as they drag race to the strike. Mike Finney is just about checked out on the field. Lonnie Rivers is in second, third is Keith Pelkey, and Susie is now in patrol of that number four car of Keith Pelkey. Pelkey in the four backsliding. Perhaps the right rear going away on that car. He was dominant early on, but then the field was able to reel him in. Inside five laps to go now for that number 69 of Mike Finney. Finney looking to pick up win number three of the year. He's got two already, and he's in a good position to do it right now. 
At 69 is well ahead of the R7 of Lonnie Rivers, third. Is Keith Kelke fourth? Is Susie fifth? Is LaFountain sixth? Is Daniel seventh? Is Auburn eighth? Haywood ninth? Is Branham? And rounding out the top ten right now is the zero three of Speedy Brissett. Mike Finney in the 69 is about to come up on a lap car. The 59 of Stephen Brissett. He will uh, make quick work and dispatch of the 59 on the front stretch. There were two laps to go that time around for the 69 to Mike Finney. Finney in the 69 was patient. Wait, he uh, waited to find room. Down on the inside, he was able to do it. White flag is out one more time around. Chris Susie in the 24 is driven around the four for the third spot. Susie takes third away from Pelkey. Two more corners this time around for the 69. And he is going to be on his way to win number three of the year. Mike Finney wins it. Second is going to go to Lonnie Rivers. Third is going to go to the 24 of Chris Susie. Fourth to the four of Keith Pelkey. And fifth is going to go to the 20 of Jamie LaFountain. Sixth was Little Joe Daniels. Seventh was Cody Alvin. Eighth was Nick Haywood. Dairy Supply, number 69, into victory lane. He'll enjoy his victory lap. It's the third time this year. At that number 69 has carried the checkered flag in the Sportsman Modified Division. Mike came into this race sitting second in the point standings. He will close the gap to Nick Haywood. If uh, Nick Haywood finished in the uh, eighth position, it'll be a uh, pickup in the neighborhood of somewhere in the, uh, in the area of about 20 points. Here he comes now. Give him a nice round of applause. Third win of the year for Mike Finney. Reminds me of the Martin Wad dance. <laughs> Mike, nice job. We're number three of the year. It seemed as though tonight, early on, you got on it really quick. You were working down to the inside and you were really pushing the car. But once you got up to second, you were very patient. You waited for the uh, hole coming off of turn number four. Talk about the pass for the win. Well, we were a little loose there at the beginning. Um, I made an adjustment when that caution came out. Good thing for that caution. That, that tightened us up pretty good. So uh, we made it stick on the outside, and I think that's what we needed to do. Pelkey was a little tight off, so uh, I drove under him. I wanted to be real cautious around him because I dumped him earlier this year on accident. So good run for those guys, too. And... Uh, we're going to go race tomorrow, I guess. One thing that uh, seemed to really help you out is your car is very good on the bottom. You mentioned you were able to get it to stick up on top. Many of these drivers like the top, but I noticed your car is very strong on the bottom, and that allows you to pick cars off down on the bottom. We dialed the car in pretty good. i got to thank Jason Durgan right here. He really picked the hot setup for the feature. We struggled through the heat race and some practice, but Jason put the setup in, and he goes, this is the one. So uh, we got it. Nice job on win number three. Thank you. That's Mike Finney. He picks up a feature event. So if you want to get in tonight's 50-50, stop down by the customer service booth and do it quickly. All right, ready to go. 60 laps tonight for the Mini Modifies. They normally run 15. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out, and we're ready to go for the Mini Mods this evening. Tire conservation, patience, a number of things will lead to success this evening. And let's see which strategy pays off the best side by side in turn number three for the lead. It's Blaney on the bottom, signs on the top. Off the fourth turn, drag race for the lead of lap number one, and it's gonna go to Pete Blaney. Signs not going away on the top of the number three. Meanwhile, the 66 is moving on the top. Robert Foley is into the third spot. Rob Clark's pushing him through on the top in the 14. Lombardway's losing spots in that 69 in the middle. Tyson Drown's looking to move down on the inside. He's getting some help on the back door from the 20K of Game Favreau. Dale O'Neill in the 16 right now, pinned down to the inside, but that's okay. Oh boy, look out. There goes the 41 of Tim LaFountain. LaFountain goes around down on the inside. It's a slow pace. You got it coming now. Yeah, yeah. I still oh owe you seven. God. <laughs> 
All right, slow pace set by Pete Blaney as he crawls off of turn number four. Perhaps he's reading a book. Now he gets on it. A bunch of cars pull out a line, three wide, four wide as they take the green. Eric Rio wants to go again. They're four wide through turns one and two. Dale O'Neill working on the rim and the zero two down on the bottom. Dale O'Neill in the number 16 car, still three wide on the top of the racetrack. <laughs> O'Neill working the rim on the top of the racetrack and he is flying to the front. He's now come up on the 69 of Josh Lavarnway. Lavarnway takes that 69 into a middle lane. That allows room up on top, but now the, the uh, 69 car pushes up, and Dale O'Neill elects to go down to the bottom. He'll follow Kane Favreau around down on the inside in the 20K. Out front, it's Pete Blaney in the 22B. Rob Sines is second. Third is Rob Clark. Fourth is Tyson Brown. And fifth right now is the 20K of Kane Favreau. Favreau with a look down on the inside off of turn number two. Dale O'Neill with a good run as well. Here comes Rob Clark down to the inside of the three and then to the uh, six. Uh oh, look out. Kate Favreau got to the back end of Tyson Drown. Drown able to save it though as he still runs in the four spot. Chris Lavera on the move two in the four car. He's also a car to watch. He's got uh, a number of four cylinder wins here at the uh, Speedway. Pete Blaney is uh, running away out front, but Rob Clark was able to get around the three of Rob Signs and and now he's got some clear track up in front to try and run down that 22B. As Dale O'Neill looking to move down on the inside in the 16. O'Neill all the way up to the third position already on lap number 11. O'Neill started in 11th and is up to third place now in that 16 car. The passing flag is out for, guess who? Pizza, pizza. The pizza wagon. The pizza wagon is shown the passing flag. Here goes Dale O'Neill now in the 16 to the inside of the 14. O'Neill takes that second spot away without any problem down the back stretch and into turn number three. That car is dialed in. The top work, the bottom work. That car is great for Dale O'Neill tonight. One car that's backsliding right now is the six of Tyson Drown. Drown is really uh, struggling with that number six car as that car is backsliding. Eric Reel is working on the back bumper of that car right now. And behind Eric Reel is the point leader, the 54 of Jason Chris. Reel really wants to keep that 54 behind him. As the Reel is second place in points. And that is the man he has to chase down. Dale O'Neill has come to within a couple of car lengths of the leader right now. It's Pete Blaney on point. And now on the back bumper is Dale O'Neill. Blaney looks at the rearview mirror two laps ago. He sees nothing. Now he looks at the rearview mirror, and he sees that Chevy symbol on the front nose of the 16 of Dale O'Neill. Big orange. Here goes Dale O'Neill. It could be a pass for the lead, and it is down the back stretch and into turn number three. O'Neill takes the lead on lap number 15. That would be uh, the regular distance over a regular distance race. Pete Blaney would have won the race. However, 60 laps tonight, and Dale O'Neill is in a good position right now. A couple of lap cars up ahead run side by side. Michael White in the 78, and Rick Welch in the 50. They'll see the passing flag once again. Rick Welch moves down to the inside with a 50, and the leaders will move by on the top of the racetrack. Meanwhile, racing mid-pack, 0-2 of Riel, looking for a way by the 20K of Kane Fabro. Favreau on top, Riel on the bottom. Riel in that 0-2 is going to be snookered as there's a couple of lap cars up ahead. He throws it deep into the corner and tries to push up in front of that number 20K car. Riel in the 0-2 with a good move down to the inside. He might get pinned though down to the inside if Kate Favreau turns left hard. Although Favreau backs off and Eric Riel is able to move through up into position number 6 with that port with the 0-2 car rather as I said on the number 14. As he moves through down to the inside of the 14. Rob Clark in that 14. Was fifth. He's back to sixth now as Eric Riel takes the spot away. Eric Riel's the man on the move as well. If he can get up into the second spot. And there's a yellow flag. That would certainly be very interesting. Although the 0-2 just got the right side tires off in the bunker. That really broke the momentum of the 0-2 as he raced down the back stretch. And that allowed the 14 of Rob Clark to close the distance. 20 laps in and 40 laps remain. Yellow flag is out at the 20 lap mark. Turn three. Robert Foley has come to a halt atop turn number three on the restart and then a three wide move. 
and then quickly uh, ushered that car down in the inside lane. And then all his work has been done there. All right, here they come off the fourth turn. Green, flag is out. And it's a good restart for both the 16 and the four. LaVere in the four car. Looks to move behind the 16 of O'Neill. As O'Neill runs down the back stretch, he takes the lead away from that four car. Chris Clark runs in third. Eric Reel moves through to fourth down on the inside. Uh-oh. Oh! The pizza wagon is, is trailing done. Sparks. Ah, they might have put the oven in that car. Yeah. And the pizza is cooked. It's hot and ready. Stay pretty competitive down the stretch. Dale O'Neill is looking for win number six this year. He's on point. Same dance partner at the door. It's the four of Chris LeVere. Here they come off the fourth turn. Green flag is out. And a dead even restart that time for the 16 in the four car. Chris LeVere in the four tries to make it work on the top of the racetrack, but he can't quite get it to stick. Dale O'Neill keeps the advantage in the number 16 down to the inside. Eric Reel in the 0-2 looks to move through down on the inside of Chris Clark. Clark in that 77 car up on the top of the racetrack. Reel down on the bottom. And Clark is able to maintain that third position on the top of the racetrack as he uses the progressive banking off the fourth turn. Pete Blaney in the 22B movement. Uh-oh, look out. The right side tires off the back stretch for the four car. Got the bunker. Yep, Archie Bunker on the back stretch for the four. And the 77 of Chris Clark comes through. So does the uh, Real 02. Down on the inside, but Flaubert's not going away. He's running the top of the racetrack, and he's trying to get those positions back. Pete Pelaney is back into the top five. He worked his way around the 14 of Rob Clark, who is backsliding now. The 54 of Jason Chris sits in the sixth spot, and he's looking to crack into the top five. This time off the fourth turn, that 54 looks down to the inside of uh, the Blaney's number 22B. Couldn't get a grip off of four, but has a good run in turn number two. Blaney pushes up the racetrack. Chris sticks on the bottom. And Jason Chris in the Bud Light Platinum 54 takes the fifth spot away down on the inside. Some racing through the, the uh, middle of the pack towards uh, the back of the pack. You see the 86 of Amber Turner and the 6 of Tyson Brown. They've been going at it side by side. Amber ends up winning that battle and now side by side of the 69 and the 6. As it gets pretty tight down the back stretch, they race three wide into turn number three. You spoke too soon. That three wide battle. In a turn number three, the six of Tyson Brown was uh, able to back out of it. And Tyson's looking for a way by. High low now looks to slingshot down to the bottom. He gets down to the bottom. Saw some sparks fly that time off the second turn. And that's some good racing towards the uh, middle to the back of the pack. Josh Laporte, the 45B, a miss tonight. That car is off the pace towards the back of the pack. Normally we see him running up uh, in contention for the lead. Look at this battle in the back. It's uh, about five cars battling here in the back of the pack. The nine of Neil Martin, the 26 of Matt Peruso, the 79 Jay LaGrave, and the 50 of Rick Welch. There goes Neil Martin in the nine. He goes up in overturn number two. He enjoys... Uh -oh. oh boy, Dale O'Neill, get him a, uh -oh. oh geez, he is going slow on the back stretch and uh -oh. cars are getting around him left and right, and one nearly uh, didn't get around him. You can see the damage on the uh, left side of the four, some sheet metal is hanging, as that nine car had to have gotten a piece. Oh boy, look out, there goes the 22B around, and he comes up across the uh, front stretch and no one hits him. I'll explain what happened on this one. Blaney in the 20. O'Neill on the bottom. And Clark on the top. Here they come. Slow pace right now. Now O'Neill gets on it. Green flag is back out. And O'Neill with a great jump down on the inside. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Dave D. Moore is parked up in front of the Casella Waste Management sign on the back stretch. And we. All right, we are ready to go again. Here they come. Off the fourth turn. Green. Flag is out. Chris Clark's looking to get down to the bottom. He can't do it. The 2 of Riel was there, but now Riel is backed off. Look at this. The pizza wagon joins in front of the field. Uh-oh. Oh, no. We could have a flat pizza as the field uh -oh. runs up on the pizza wagon. He's running in the middle of the turn. Uh -oh. Dale O'Neill is going to take it down to the inside. Fly by to pizza wagon. 
He, the pizza wagon says, oh my gosh, here they come, and he gets up to the top of the racetrack quickly. Crisis averted there, at least so far, as the pizza wagon has stayed out of the way. Dale O'Neill out front. Chris Clark running second. He is about a car length off the back bumper of the 16 of Dale O'Neill. Off the fourth turn, O'Neill still remains about a car length ahead of that 77 car. And then it's about two or three car lengths back to the 02 of Eric Riel. And then about five or six back to the 54 of Jason Chris. And rounding out the top five right now is the four of Chris LeVere. Sixth is Kate Babro. Seventh, Chad Collins. Eighth, Rob Clark. Ninth, Amber Turner. Tenth, the 69 of Josh LaVarnway. Eleventh is Tyson Drown. Twelfth is the 41 of Tim LaFountain. Thirteenth is Josh LaFort. Fourteenth is Pete Blaney. And fifteenth right now. Rounding out the top 15 is the three of Rob Sign. 16th is Matt Brusso. 17th is Jay LaGrave. 18th is the 50 of Rick Welch. Uh, 19th is the 78 of Mike Wright, and the pizza wagon would be 20th, a number of laps down. Out front, it's still the 16 showing the way. Good battle right now, side by side between the six of Tyson Drown and the 69 of Josh Lavarnley. I, I think Keith, uh, the uh, 16 for Dale O'Neill may be uh, running into some trouble. I thought I saw Sparks dragging on the right side of his car that last lap over in turn number three. Chris Clark seemed to reel him in down the backstretch that last lap as well. And again, you see him reeling him in, Rob, going towards the third turn. Well, Chris Clark in that 77 has been doing that for a number of laps but just can't quite get him off the corner. Going into the corner, he's gaining ground, but off the corner, that 16 car is pretty strong. There goes the pizza wagon off the top of turn number two. Here come the leaders. In front of the leaders. And he's down on the bottom this time. The leaders will work along the top of the racetrack. And Dale O'Neill pushed up the racetrack a little bit. Chris Clark right on the back bumper that time off the fourth turn. 45 laps are in the book, 15 to go. So it would be a regular distance race from here on out for this division. As if it were lap number one to lap number 15. 15 laps remain. And Dale O'Neill still holds off to 77 and also drawing closer is the 0-2 of Eric Riel. Riel in the 0-2, just a car length off the back bumper of the 77. Chris Clark in the 77. Not a good run that time off the second turn and down the back stretch. But as he closes into turn number three, he's got more power in the three. They're side by side up in front of the number 16. The passing flag is shown to those cars that are side by side up in front. Michael Wright does a nice job to take his 78 down to the inside. The 50 of Rick Welch is running up on top of the racetrack. And Dale O'Neill is going to have to go down to the inside of him. He does. Chris Clark does the same. And so does Real. They all take it down to the inside. As Rick Welch in the 50 elects to stay on top of the racetrack. Rube is closing for the 54 of Jason Chris, but Chris is going to have to finagle his way through the middle. Although the 50 of Welch kindly goes down to the inside. Here we go this time down the back stretch. With the 79 of Jay LaGrave through a monkey wrench into the thing. As these three cars pull right on one another's back bumper. It's O'Neill out front, the 77 of Clark on the back bumper of him, and on the back bumper of Clark. The 0-2 of Eric Riel. Riel in the 0-2 had a good run last time off of turn number two. This time not so great. Chris Clark with a great run into turn number three. Tim LaFountain takes the 41 to the uh, infield. He uh, likely is going to rejoin the field. Oh, not careful. right here. Better be careful there. Here come the leaders. They're by, so that's safe. And now he joins down on the inside of the lane. Dale O'Neill has now opened up about a car length and a half advantage, but here comes the 77. He is so strong going into turn number three, as is the 0-2 of Rio. The pizza wagon is uh, showing the passing flag quite a bit. As he gets it again, and the leaders will go around the outside of the 24 car. Less than nine laps remaining now. You can see O'Neill's car really seems to be hooked, off, hooked up rather, off of turn number four. Clark's car is better off of turn number two, and that's why he closes into three and four. Here they come off the fourth turn. Lap number 52 goes in the books. And Dale O'Neill still shows the way in that number 16 car. It's Chris Clark comfortably uh, in second right now as the 0-2 seems to be trailing off a bit. Eric Riel in the 0-2 trailing off, now about two to three car lengths behind. Although drives it real deep into turn number three and is uh, just still a couple of car lengths off the back bumper of the 77 of Chris Clark. Dale O'Neill 
So if you think about the work he did early on to put it in this position, you really have to credit the three and four wide moves he pulled on the top of the racetrack, then wrestled that car down to the inside line, and then worked down on the inside. He gets around the nine of Neil Martin. But just what the work he did and the work he put on early on set him up in a good position, put him out front early, and he's been able to hold off the 77 of Chris Clark, also the four of Chris LeBaire. When you can race your way up to the front, it's a lot easier to hold cars off than it is to catch, pe catch up to people. Five, Five to laps go. to go this time around for the 16 of Dale O'Neill. Five more times around. Real heavy traffic up ahead of the 16 of Dale O'Neill. Will this play any factor in the result of tonight's 60 lap mini modified race? We'll have to see. The passing flag is shown to those cars up in front of the leaders. O'Neill takes it to the top of the racetrack. Clark is about two to three car lengths off the back bumper now. O'Neill's car is stronger than Clark's right now as they race down the back stretch. This time in turn number three, it's still O'Neill by about two car lengths off the fourth turn. They're side by side up in front of him. Rob Sines has shown the uh, passing flag. As the 24, Sean Roddenbush stays down on the inside. Dale O'Neill perhaps was just playing possum earlier on with the 77 car. He's now pulled away to about five car lengths ahead of the 77 of Clark. Heavy, heavy lap traffic up ahead though. Popsicle sticks are out. Two laps to go for Dale O'Neill and he's down to the inside of Rob Sines. Inside of Sines, inside of LaGrave. Put a check mark next to the three and 79. He gets around with no problem. He's got uh, the 22B up in front of him. But that's quite a length up ahead. Here he comes this time off the fourth turn. White flag is out one more time around for the 16 of Dale O'Neill. O'Neill in the number 16 car. Has a very comfortable lead right now. He's just got to be safe around the racetrack. The man with all the pressure on is Chris Clark as the 02 is right there on the back bumper. Here he comes off of turn number four. Dale O'Neill picks up yet another win in the number 16. Rob Clark second, third to Eric Riel. Fourth is going to go to uh, Jason Chris in the 54. Fifth to the four of Chris LeVere. Sixth will go to the 22 of Chad Collins. Seventh to the 41 of LaFountain. Or rather the 14 of Clark. Eighth would go to Amber Turner in the 86. Ninth to our length advantage. And he held that down the stretch. Dale's out of his car. Robbie is down trackside. All right, give Dale a nice round of applause. Win number six on the year for Dale. Dale, nice job. 60 laps is uh, an awful long race. You had a number of restarts. You were able to hold off guys as, as we typically see you do. And uh, what I think was the key to winning the race tonight, you got on it really early. You made a four wide move on the restart up on the top of the racetrack. The car was great on the top. Once you had room down on the inside, you pulled the 16 down on the inside and you were able to pick off cars one by one down on the inside. You hustled to the front early and you were able to hold them off down the stretch. I think that was the key to success tonight. Yeah, the car was great, so I didn't really say much. I just went to the front and kind of saved in the middle, and then last 10 laps, I got back on it. It was a good car. And uh, coming down the stretch, were you worried at all? The real heavy lap traffic up in front. Uh, were you worried at all? Were you playing in a couple of situations, whether to go high, low, or whatnot in your mind? Yeah, I was worried, but they all did good. They all pulled to the bottom, gave me plenty of room. So it was easy for me. All right, well, nice job. Winning as driver in the division. Win number six. Nice job. Thank you. Uh, I got to thank my father, my mother, my brother, DMO Motors. Thanks. All right, nice job, Dale O'Neill. The 16 is Lance Willicks. The 97, Chris Vernal. The 18 is Chris Kaye. And the number 69, it's Mike Finney. The 7, the R7 is Lonnie Rivers. At the back of the pack, the 4 for Keith Pelkey. That's the field. Green flag is out. 30 laps tonight, that's the distance for the Ernie's Discount Tools Dirt Car Modified. It's Mike Riel leading the way down the back stretch. Craig Riel on the outside. We got a pile up over at turn number two. And that's gonna bring out a yellow flag of July. Eddie Haywood to his wheel on the outside. Then Gagno and Stone. Those cars start in the top 12. Here they come into turn number four, down the line. Green flag is out. As the Reels lead the field off into turns one and two. Again, it is Mike Riel with a better start. Craig on the outside, got 
uh, snookered a little bit uh, on that outside line. And now the 34 of George Foley is able to power underneath. He'll get the second. But Lonnie Rivers is off the top of turn number two, the R7. Mike on the inside, his son Craig is on the outside, ready to roll into turn number four, setting a slow pace. Now they're on the hammer, here they come along the front stretch and the green flag is out. The field hustles off at a one and two. A better run that time for Craig up on top, but George Foley gets a real good run down on the inside, so does Bertie Ohm on the top of the racetrack. Mueller has gone to fifth, he's moved down in front of Andy Lindemann in the three machine. Meanwhile, Patrick Dupree hustles to the outside in the number 24 car, he's in the sixth spot. Wheel to wheel racing through much of the field. It's Mike Riel leading lap one. His son Craig runs in the second spot. Here comes Bert Guillaume flying off the top of two. Oh, look out. He gets into the bunker and goes up over the jersey barrier off the top of turn number three. And that is going to bring out a yellow flag. Mike and Craig Riel on the front row. Again, it's a slower pace. Now they're on it. Here they come along the front stretch. Butch Henry throws the green flag. Mike Riel again from the inside, runs well off a of two, so does Craig Riel, gets a real good run, down the back stretch, diving down to the inside of his father. Mike Riel will hang on to the lead, that was a great run off a of two for Craig Riel. Down along the front stretch, it is Mike Riel showing the way. Craig runs in the second spot, Mueller on the outside, Foley down on the inside, trying to get underneath turn two, we got a mess over in uh, two. Roger Labreche in the number 100, he gets punched by the 16 of Lance Willicks. Bad luck. All right, ready to run again. Here they come into turn number four. Down the front stretch. Here's the green flag. Oh, Craig's got a real good run going into turn number two. Mike gets off at two really strong, and Foley goes with him. Oh, Todd Stone's in trouble. Todd Stone goes spinning into the infield. The G-Stone Motors 1X comes to a halt just feet away from the light tower as they mix it up coming off at turn four on the front stretch. The ninth spot. And then I believe it's Chris Kaye who's on the outside in the 10th position with the 18. Those cars in the top 10, two laps complete, 28 to go. Here they come. Down the line, green, green, green. George Foley again hustling down on the inside line. Craig Riel trying to stay right with him. Foley has the position now off of turn number four. George Foley goes to second. Yellow flag is out. Who is it? This restarts that we've had over the course of the first three laps. Let's see if he can master another one. Foley at the wheel on the outside. Mike Riel punches his ticket. Here he comes down the front stretch. Green flag is out as they set sail open to turns one and two. Riel down on the inside. George Foley on the outside. They power off two. Foley to the top. Riel drifts up there. Down the back stretch going to turn number three. George Foley for the lead on the outside. They're wheel to wheel into turn number four. Here they come along the front stretch down the line. It's still Mike Riel. George Foley powers into one and two. Let's see if he gets him now. I think he's gonna. There goes Foley on the top of the racetrack. He'll take the lead. Jesse Mueller is gonna follow through on the outside. I think Mueller in the 19 is going to dispense of the 0-2 of Mike Riel off of turn number four. At the strike, give Mueller second. Mike Riel back to third. Patrick Dupree is closing in with a Labatt blue light number 24. Andy Haywood got snookered behind Craig Riel. That's going to allow the four of Leon Gagneau to pick up a spot. Meanwhile, Dupree is trying to get underneath Mike Riel off of turn number four, and that'll send a pistol into the third position. Jesse Mueller going for the lead down the backstretch into turn number three. He's wheel to wheel to the third turn. Foley's down on the inside. Mueller up on the top of the racetrack. They almost touch off turn number four down the line. It is Mueller at the line by inches. Mueller on the outside, powers off at turn number two. Down the back stretch, Jesse Mueller is setting sail. Mueller pulls away to a two car length advantage over the 34 of Foley. The 24 of Dupree runs in the third spot. Mike Riel is fourth, fifth is Leon Gagneau. Running in the sixth position is now Craig Riel. Seventh is Andy Haywood in the 80. Eighth is Chris Kaye. Ninth is Max Vienne. Tenth is Andy Lindemann. Running in 11th, it is Matt Woodruff. Twelfth is Richard Tesser. Thirteenth is Mike Wells. Fourteenth is Lance Willicks. And fifteenth spot, that is Todd Stone and the G-Stone Motors 1X. Those cars on the lead lap. Fifteen cars still out on the racetrack. Jesse Mueller with the Mueller and Sons heavy duty towing and recovery is pulling away from the 34 of Foley. Oh, that last lap through three and four, Mueller bobbled a little bit, but he's able to power away down the front stretch. Stone back to the pits. A G-Stone Motors team, rarely do they lose laps 
Todd Stone goes back to the garage area. There goes our point leader. He was the last car on the lead lap out on the racetrack. He was running in 15th. And that's likely where he's going to finish tonight. It'll be a 15th place position for the defending track champion and current point leader. He has an 82 point lead coming into this race. That will, uh, he'll lose points to Leon Gagno, who right now is running in the fourth spot. But he still should have a pretty comfortable margin going into next week. Mueller has a backstretch lead, almost a full backstretch, over George Foley in the 34 machine. The pistol Patrick Dupree sits in third. Got a big gap back to Gagno in the four. Mike Riel is hanging on to a top five run right now. He's got his son Craig behind him in the sixth spot. Seventh is Andy Haywood in the 80. Eighth, Max Vienne. Ninth is Chris K.A. Tenth, Andy Lindemann in the three machine. Eleventh is Mike Wells. Twelfth is Richard Tesser. Thirteenth is Matt Woodruff. And Lance Willix rounds out the field. He is 14th on the grid as Max Vien tries to get a position underneath the 80 of Andy Haywood. Racing for spots just inside the top 10. Haywood is able to hold him off. We are past the halfway point. Just past the halfway point. It is Mueller in the 19. Foley in the 34. Dupree in the 24. Gagno in the 4 machine. Mike and Craig Riel. A family battle for 5th. Mike has the 5th spot. Craig going after it on the outside. They work down a backstretch into turn number three. Mike Riel still down low. Craig Riel up on the top of the racetrack. Wheel to wheel racing for the fifth position. Mike hanging on to it. Sixth is Craig. Seventh is Andy Haywood. Eighth is Max Vienne. Yellow flag is out. Yellow flag out on the track for Mike Wells in the 76. The fastest car tonight so far in the feature event as he is ready to rock and roll again off of turn number four. Here he comes down the front stretch, and there's the green flag. Mueller really didn't punch it. It didn't seem to respond all that well coming down the front stretch. Foley is hanging with him for now, but once he gets some more heated, oh, we got to spin towards the back, and it's Richard Tesser. Richard Tesser in the number 49 goes around. Mueller set to punch it into three and four. Foley. In the second spot, then Dupree right on the back bumper of Fuller. A little bumper, bumper tag over at turn number four. Now the green flag. They hustle off at a one and two. Mueller pulling away off two. Dupree trying to hang with Foley in the second spot. He is right on his back bumper. Now about a half car linked off as they work into three and four. The battle for fifth, Mike Riel, Craig Riel. That resumes. Craig Riel on the outside is going to go to the fifth spot. Mike Riel now to sixth position. Andy Haywood running in seventh. Running in eighth on the outside is Max Vienne. Ninth is Chris K.A. Andy Lindemann is off the pace. He is going to limp back to the garage area. Thirteen cars out on the racetrack. That lap a 16.2 for Jesse Mueller. Both Foley and Dupree were in the 16.4 bracket. So Mueller two tenths of a second quicker than both the 34 and the 24. Leon Gagno, who is running in the fourth position. Gagno with a 16.4 as he sits in that fourth spot. This time by 10 laps to go for Jesse Mueller as lap number 20 goes up on the board. Mueller leading by some 10 car lengths off of turn number two over George Foley. Dupree in the third spot, fourth. Gagno, fifth. Andy Haywood into the top five for the first time. He's taking the Roto-Rooter, Gaioso Line and Spirits 80 machine into that fifth position. Craig Riel is now running sixth with a CO2. Seventh is Mike Riel, although Chris K.A. is working on him on the outside. Chris K.A. trying to get the seventh spot away from Mike Riel as they race for position down the back stretch. Eighth right now would be K.A., ninth would be Max Vienne. Rounding out the top 10, first time ever at Airborne for Lance Willix. Willix is in the 10th spot with a number 16 machine. And the Teresa New York driver, if he can get a top 10, he'd probably take that and smile tonight and be happy with it. Mueller, half the front stretch is now the advantage. He is on his way to back-to-back -back victories for the Mod Squad. This will be win number three for the Mueller and Sons heavy-duty towing and recovery machine. George Foley and Patrick Dupree. Dupree is right on the back bumper for that second spot. Leon Gagno sitting in the fourth spot. He's turning lap times that are just a little bit quicker than Dupree. So he may also factor into that battle for the second position. That last lap, Dupree was the slowest of the top four drivers. 
And as they complete this lap, uh, still two tenths of a second quicker is Jesse Mueller, the number 19 machine. Leon Gagne was faster than both the second and third place racers, but he's in fourth, and he's not quite closing at the, uh, at the rate that he would need to really make a play for either second or third. Mueller's lead is now the backstretch. At two tenths of a second every lap, he continues to pull away. The 24 of Dupree is trying to nose underneath the 34 to grab that second spot, but he hasn't been able to do it. Foley has just been feeding on the bottom of the racetrack. Dupree wants to live there as well. Dupree got a little loose that time off of turn number two, and he has not been able to really make a bid to get past the 34 of Foley. Less than two laps remaining now for Jesse Mueller. Mueller in the middle of the backstretch, cruising into turns three and four. He's got some slower cars in front, but I think he can just take it easy and tiptoe around him. He really doesn't have to hustle his way into that lap traffic with a white flag out on the track. Can Dupree make a move on Foley? He's gonna go to the top of the racetrack. On the final lap, Foley powers off turn number two. That's the best race on the track. Here comes your winner. It is going to be Jesse Mueller, the 19 of the win. The race for second. Coming down the line, it will be Foley hanging on for second. Third goes to Dupree. Fourth goes to Leon Gagneau. Fifth goes to Andy Haywood. Sixth goes to the three of Andy Liniment. Seventh is Craig Riel. Eighth is Mike Riel. Ninth is Chris Kaye. Tenth is Max Vienne. Eleventh is Lance Willicks. Twelfth is the 49 of Richard Tesser. Thirteenth is Matt Woodruff. And in fourteenth would be the 76 of Mike Wells. And he would be the final car finishing on the lead lap. All right, Rob's headed trackside. He will get a word with tonight's modified winner, Jesse Mueller. Mueller picks up win number three on the season. Nice job by George Foley and the pistol Patrick Dupree to come home second and third. Jesse Mueller. Go ahead, Rob. All right, Mueller is out of his race car. Back-to-back -back wins now for the Mueller & Sons heavy-duty towing and recovery machine. This is his third win of 2013. Come on over, Jesse. Well, certainly did take a while for uh, this race to eventually get some flow to it. Here is uh, Jesse Mueller. All right. Jesse. All right, well, there's lots of hugs to go around for Mueller down here in Victory Lane. Were you close to any of those mishaps at the start? It was, at the beginning, just a whole bunch of uh, mishmash going on. Were you close to any of that? Yeah, I was, especially when uh, Pierre went off the backstretch. I was getting kind of nervous, but that car was just phenomenal. And to come here and do two back-to-back -back wins with the competition, it's just, it's really amazing. The effort we put into it, got to thank my dad. He helps us through it all. My mom, it's great to be here. Uh, Eric and Sherry Laundry, they sponsor us. Uh, that's awesome. Appreciate it. Wouldn't be here without them. It's just great to be back. So glad. You had the fastest car of anybody in the qualifiers. You turned the fastest lap, and then you backed it up tonight. Down the stretch, two-tenths of a second faster than anybody else. So, again, the car has just been hooked up. Tell me about the hat. What's the deal with that? Uh, I think it makes a statement. I don't know. I'm just going to keep going with it. <laughs> did, you didn't borrow it from Gardner Stone, did you? No, but I got the idea. All right. Well, congratulations. Nice job. Thanks. Your car was cooking. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks to Mike Parati, too. What a great job he does here. All right. There's Jesse Mueller. He wins for the third time in uh, 2013. Uh, Sable Forks, that is Brandon Atkins. That's a 17 car field going 25 laps tonight. It is the limited late models ready to run off a of turn number four. There's the green flag. They hustle off into turn number one. Brent Jarvis on the outside. Dave Raptoy down on the inside. They work three wide, four wide. No, Larry Underwood backed out of it down the back stretch. That outside line started to hustle into turn number three, and then it backed up behind Brent Jarvis. Three wide for Larry Underwood, threading the needle along the front stretch. Dylan Payes down on the inside. Robin Wood has already made a good move. He's been able to get a pass, to get past rather, Jamie Begor with a number 19. Those are the top two point guys. They work down the back stretch. Danny Sullivan in car number three, trying to look for room underneath Dave Raptoy in the 21. Off of turn number four, down the stripe to the line. It is Danny Sullivan, your leader. 
Sullivan takes the lead on lot number two. Sullivan now drives away from Raptoy, but he's pulling Bucko Branham with him. Branham going to the second spot. Third is now Raptoy. Fourth is the 73 of Underwood. Fifth is Dylan Paye. Three wide right behind Paye. Here comes Robin Wood through on the inside. Robin Wood in the 61, gaining position. Jamie Bigor trying to hook to the back bumper of Wood, trying to get underneath the 18 of Sean Duquette. Right now, Robin Wood runs in the sixth spot. Seventh is going to go to Bigor now. It is the 18 of Duquette taking it back. Now Bigor comes back after him on the inside. The leader is Danny Sullivan. He's got a rear view mirror full of 20 of Buck O'Branham. Branham looks down to the inside into turn number two. Sullivan takes it to the top of the track off two. And he tries to pull away down the back stretch into three and four. Branham stays in it deep into three and four, just off the back bumper. They work down the front stretch. Danny Sullivan continues to show the way by a car link. Branham running in second. Dave Raptoy is third. Dylan Paye first two weeks ago, second last week. And now trying to get to that third spot. Just five laps in, he's got the advantage down to the inside. Robin Wood is also moving. He's to the inside of Larry Underwood. Right now in fifth, Jamie Bigor trying to hustle to get underneath the 73 of Underwood as they work into turn number one. The top two cars pulling away from Dylan Paye who runs in the third spot. Robin Wood is fourth on the inside. Dave Raptoy in the 21 runs fifth on the top. Jamie Bigor underneath trying to get the sixth spot. He will. Next in his sights is the 21 of Raptoy as Bigor tries to get into the top five. He's underneath Raptoy going to turn number one. Bigor has position down to the inside. He'll go to the fifth spot. Raptoy on the top of the track tries to fight back, but it should be Bigor by the time they hit the start finish line and complete lap number eight. Top two cars still pulling away from Dylan Paye, who's third. Robin Wood closing in on Paye. Mike Shagnon goes around and Sullivan to set the pace. Branham on the outside, nose is ahead into turn number four. Here comes Sullivan, he's on it now as they work into turn number four. Down the front stretch, green flag is out. They make contact slightly going to turn number one. Sullivan tries to pull away. Branham goes to the top of the track in turn number two. He has to hang on to it, had to get off of it a little bit. Now Robin Wood trying to make a move. Robin Wood to the outside of Bucko Branham. Here comes the 61 looking high off of turn number four. Danny Sullivan is your leader. Bucko Branham, though, is under attack from the 61 of Robin Wood. Wood trying to get to the outside. Dylan Paye fading back a little bit. Jamie Bigor is going to look to the outside now. Bigor in the 19 trying to get a spot from Paye. Meanwhile, Robin Wood going after the 20 of Bucko Branham. Robin Wood on the outside of Branham. Branham wiggles off at turn number four, and that is going to give momentum to Robin Wood on the outside line. In turn two, again, the 20 appears to be loose. Robin Wood with a good run off the top of turn two. He's going to grab the second spot. You know Bucko's not going to give that spot up without a tussle, but off of turn number four down the line, Robin Wood was there for the second position, but it was a much better lap that time from the inside for Branham. Over in turn number two, again, advantage Robin Wood. Jamie Bigor and Dylan Pay have an excellent battle going on right behind them. The 55 of Jim McKiernan is headed back to the pits. The uh, sheet metal on the right side is flapping in the air. Side by side racing for second. Side by side racing for fourth. And that's all right with Danny Sullivan. Again, there was a bobble from Branham over in turn number two. That allows Robin Wood to fly around on the outside. Jamie Bigor now trying to get to the outside of Branham's number 20. That 20 is loose. Every once in a while, it'll just bobble badly near the top of the track as we're past the halfway point. Dylan Pay in the 07 has the fifth spot. Jamie Bigor at his door on the outside running in fourth. Branham running in third down on the inside line. Robin Wood is trying to chase down the three of Danny Sullivan. They work in a turn number one. Paye on the inside. Bigor on the outside. Branham will drift his car up towards the top of the track off turn number two. That's where his car seems to be more stable up towards the top of the racetrack. He's trying to work that lower line. Now 10 laps to go for Danny Sullivan. Off of turn four, down along the front stretch. Paye in the 07, Bigor in the number 19. Almost touching, perhaps even doing so along the front stretch, just shy of the start-finish line that last lap. Paye not going away without a fight, and Jamie Bigor is losing points to the 61 of Robin Wood. Right now, Robin Wood in the second spot would be a 56-point night for Robin Wood. It would be a 50-point night right now for Bigor. That's if he hangs on to fourth. So it would be a six-point gain for Robin Wood, which would give a 14-point advantage over Bigor in the points if they finish this way. Danny Sullivan in number three. The lead is shrinking. 
Robin Wood is chasing him down. That last lap, Robin Wood turning a slightly faster lap time. We'll check their lap times this time by as lap 18 is about to go up on the board. Here's the time for Sullivan, 18.425. Actually, that last lap, it was Danny Sullivan, the faster of the two. 18.425 for Sullivan, 18.446 for Robin Wood. Jamie Begor was able to clear Dylan Paye into the fourth spot. He's gonna keep it out on the top of the racetrack though. Paye can't get back underneath. Those cars continue to run into the top five. The leader Sullivan, second Wood, third Branham, fourth Begor, fifth Paye, sixth is Underwood, seventh is Duquette, eighth is Raptoy, ninth is Paye, and rounding out the top 10 is Lagoy in the seventh. 11th would be Jarvis, 12th, would be Atkins in the four. 13th would be the 93 of Frenier. And 14th, Casey St. Clair. 15th, Mike Shagnon. 16th is Cody Myers. Everybody on the lead lap, with the exception of Jim McKiernan, who has gone back to the pits with a 55 machine. Danny Sullivan in car number three. Oh, we have a spin along the front stretch. Dave Paya in the number 68. He was running right in front of the seven of Nick Lurie. Wood in the 61. And then you've got some other good cars right behind them waiting for the restart. Though they box it up. And accordions in three and four. Now here they come along the front stretch. Green flag is out. Sullivan played it slow and it boxed up behind him. Then Wood had to get on the binders and Sullivan was able to drive away. Begor trying to get third away from Buck O'Branham down the back stretch. They race into turn number three. Robin Wood pulling up towards the back bumper of the three of Sullivan. Begor on the high side. Branham down on the low side. Racing for third. The line Begor's got third. They'll work into turn number one. Branham staying low. Begor going to the top of the racetrack. Sullivan is pulling away from Robin Wood. Begor trying to clear. Bucko Branham going to turn number three. Branham still trying to stay underneath the 19 car. Begor takes it again up towards the top of the racetrack. Off of turn number four. Two laps to go for Danny Sullivan. The 07 of Paye gets a piece of the 73 of Underwood. There goes Atkins in the four. He gets a piece of Underwood. Two other cars go off the track of trying to avoid it. Sullivan, Wood, Begor, Branham. Slow pace in a turn, number three. Sullivan says, now I want to go. He's on it. Here he comes off a of turn number four. Down to the line. Green flag is out. The inside line takes off. Begor trying to get to the inside of the 61 of Robin Wood. Oh, it's the 61 a little bit loose over at turn number two. He had to back out of it. The 20 was right on the back bumper. Begor trying to get the second spot away now. Robin Wood back to the outside of Jamie Begor. It's going to be a battle for second. White flag is out now for Danny Sullivan. Sullivan is on his way to win number two. Danny Sullivan leading. Jamie Begor running in the second spot. They work off turn number two. Down the back stretch. Begor to second. Third is Wood. Fourth, Dylan Pay on the inside. Here comes your winner off of turn number four. Second win for Danny Sullivan in the three. Begor second, Wood third. Finishing in fourth is Paye, and fifth goes to Buck O'Brandom in car number 20. Danny picks up his second win of the year in that number three car. As a, a nice job by both uh, Jamie Beagle and Robin Wood to come home second and third, respectively. There's Jamie getting out of his car. Give him a nice round of applause for second tonight. And here's Robin Wood. Nice job to third for Robin. Headed trackside to talk with the winner of tonight's Adirondack Water Systems Limited Late Model Race. Rob? All right, Robbie, Danny Sullivan is unbuckling, and he's about to climb out of his race car. He's won for the second time in 2013. Pretty good smile on his face as he held off some of the heavy hitters. Give him a nice round of applause, everybody. This is Morrisonville's Danny Sullivan. Come on over this way a little bit so Gene can see you up on the video. Tell me about the restarts. That was really the difference 
on the lap 21 restart, you played a little bit slow. Robin wanted to go, and then I thought you played it perfect. And on the lap 23 restart, you said, okay, I'm going to go early this time. Tell me about your strategy and what you're thinking uh, on those two restarts. You hit the nail on the head right there. Uh, going into three, I could tell Robin wanted to go really bad. So he kind of took off, got out ahead of me a little bit. I got a shot from Bucko. As soon as I did, I went. It worked perfectly, and then in the next restart, I knew he was probably anticipating me to go a little later, so I just I nailed it and went. And that certainly did pay off for you. You're here in victory lane for the second time. The car has just been getting better and better, and I know you get a lot of help on this race car. Tell us about the folks that are working on this car with you and what a pleasure it seems to be for you to drive this car now. Uh, well, I really got to thank... Mark Lamberton, he's been my crew chief all year. Dale Broussard, he's been doing my tires all year. Julie Roberts, my girlfriend Ashley Roberts. Josh Ware, black topping. I gotta thank my mom and my dad, of course. Uh, I'd really like to thank my sponsors. I got Parker Chevrolet over here. I figured I'd park different so they can <laughs> be in my little pictures. McSweeney's on the hood. I just picked up Northeast Irrigation and Landscaping. Got them on my windshield. Gotta thank Bankers Orchards. Oh, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> nice job, Danny. Enjoy. All right, Danny Sullivan, he ends up the winner tonight. Where's, where's Peachy? And starting shotgun on the field in the 46 from Saranac, that is Zach Daniels. All right, that's the field ready to run. Here they come, 25 laps of distance. Green flag is out. The field hustles off three wide for the lead. Off of turn number two, it's John Boone on the top of the racetrack looking for his first career victory tonight. He's got the lead in the three and four on the outside. Josh LeClaire hanging with him down on the inside line. Side by side, down the line for the lead. Give it to John Booten. John Booten leads lap number one from the top side. They mix it up a little bit into one and two. Richie Turner trying to muscle his way underneath Ryan Booten in the number 28. Everything settles out as they work down the back stretch now. Josh Terry in the 43, trying to get to second on the outside of Josh LeClaire in car number seven. Tyler Terry in the 44, also now to the outside of LeClaire. Smoke, it might have been coming off the 17 of Richie Turner that time into turn number one. John Booten in the 23, leads by two car lengths. Josh Terry in the 43 is second. Tyler Terry works in third, side by side for the fourth spot. Here comes the big daddy. Don Franklin on the top, he's going to four. Josh LeClaire sliding backwards to the fifth spot. Robert Gordon, he's on the rim, and he is trying to move into the top five. Gordon in the H2O, trying to drive around the seven to LeClaire. He'll do that down the backstretch, going to three and four. LeClaire with him, side by side, door to door into the fourth turn. They work down the front stretch, down the line, and in the fifth spot, it is going to be still the seven by inches. Robert Gordon on the outside. Meanwhile, back to the front. John Booten in the 23 has led the first four laps. He's leading by a car length into three and four. Josh Terry in the number 43 running in the second spot. John Booten showing the way. Lap five goes up and it is the Nates Automotive Machine leading by half a car length. Josh Terry is right on the back bumper. Older brother Tyler Terry runs in the third spot. Then it's Donnie Franklin at fourth. Good battle between two top cars for fifth. Richie Turner in the 17, Rob Gordon with the H2O. They run door to door for the fifth spot. Earlier this year, Ryan Booten pulled into victory lane for the first time in his career. John Booten is trying to repeat that feat tonight. He would also pull into victory lane should he hang on over the course of the next 19 laps. For the first time, he would uh, be a winner. But right now, he is leading lap seven on the board. Josh Terry right on the back bumper with the number 43. Tyler Terry just off the back bumper of his younger brother. Donnie Franklin in the 69, solid in fourth. Then there's a gap developing between fifth place runner Richie Turner and the sixth place race driver. That is the H2O of Robert Gordon. How about, is that McClatchy? Holy cow, is McClatchy flying or what? From the back of the pack, McClatchy trying to get around the H2O of Gordon now and grab the sixth spot. Jason McClatchy on the outside. Nobody has passed more cars than him. He started way in the back of the pack and McClatchy is about to get sixth. Oh man, he's on the move. Jason McClatchy in the 70 car all the way to the sixth position. McClatchy started deep in the field on the grid, but he is hustling his way to the front. Robert Gordon not giving up that position easily though, but McClatchy had it last time by at the line. Lance Raptoy also started deep in the field. He's trying to work his way up towards the front. The leader is still John Booten. That time he drifted very high off of turn number four. 
We'll see if the car is starting to fade a little bit. Josh Terry in the 43 trying to get underneath to capitalize. You know the type of year it's been for Josh Terry. He demolished a car uh, about five weeks ago now. They put this car together for him. It has become uh, more and more competitive week by week. He's in the second spot, but he himself was loose that time off of turn number four. John Booten shows the way. Behind him, you got two Terrys. The 43 is Josh, the 44 is Tyler. The 69 of Don Franklin is under attack. The 17 of Richie Turner is to the inside. Robert Gordon and Jason McClatchy are still duking it out for that spot. Gordon is not giving away the sixth position without a fight. Jason McClatchy is working for every inch on the outside. Tyler Terry is going after his brother now. As we approach lap number 13 going up on the board. Tyler Terry and Josh Terry. Josh Terry sideways, dirt tracking it off the four turn halfway. We're just past the halfway point. John Booten leading by a car length off of turn number two. What a celebration it would be in Booten land if he were to bring home the checkered flag. He's leading by a car length along the front stretch with the Terry brothers battling for second. Richie Turner at car number 17 runs in the fourth spot. He's eyeing a move to the inside of Tyler Terry, but that hole doesn't develop. Not yet. John Booten would love to see them to continue to duke it out for the second spot because there are some fast cars, namely Richie Turner in that 17, right behind. If Turner can get past the Terrys, then I think he might have something for John Booten. But right now it's a rolling roadblock in front of the 17. It's the 44 of Tyler and the 43 of Josh. They're at speed, but not quite as fast as the 17. And now Josh again sideways in turn number four. Tyler coming back on the inside line. They continue to race for the second position. Look out, Zach Daniels in trouble. He's going to head back to the garage area. That was right in front of the leaders. John Booten, car number 23, leading by a car length, and it turns three and four. They're still side by side for the second spot. The Renegades putting on some classic racing as they often do again tonight. The Terry boys racing for second. Richie Turner snookered behind them. He's looked high, he's looked low, he's got no place to go. Now here comes Big Daddy after him. Don Franklin peeking down to the inside into three and four. Side by side racing behind the leader. John Booten does not want anybody to go side by side with him. He'd like to continue to run by himself out front. Oh, he really got on the binders hard that time. Drifts high into turn number two. It may cost him. He might have overdrove turn number one. Three wide for the lead down the back stretch. They go into turn number three. Tyler's on the inside. John Boot on the outside. Three cars battling for the lead as they come down the line. At the stripe, it's still John Boot on the outside. Trying to get down in the middle. Josh Terry is there. Tyler Terry way down low on the inside. Richie Turner's in the mix. Four cars battling for the lead. They race down the back stretch. Tyler Terry on the inside puts his nose in front. Now John Booten comes back after him on the outside. Side by side off of turn number four. Down the line at the stripe. It's still John Booten leading. Five laps to go for the leaders. John Booten made one mistake going into turn number one and it's turned it into a race. Tyler Terry in the 44 trying to get back underneath. Terry's been on the inside virtually the whole race. John Booten, if he makes another mistake like he did about three laps ago in turn one, it could cost him. But he's still hanging on the lead. 21 laps complete. Can John Booten hang on for the win? Oh, look out! The 17 goes around. He might have had some help from the 69. The 11, he has to get on the binders or else make contact with the 17. Top two points. Four laps remain. Can John Booten pick up his first career win tonight? All right, here they come. They're working off a of turn number four down to the front stretch. There's the green flag. It's a good restart for Tyler Terry on the outside. John Booten on the inside line. He hasn't been there for most of the night. Tyler Terry on the outside takes the advantage off turn number two down the back stretch. Three cars battling for the third spot. Jason McClatchy backed out of it. Now John Booten sticks the nose back out in front into turn number four. Here they come off a of four down the line. It's a drag race for the lead. And the leader at the stripe appeared to be Tyler Terry on the outside. Tyler Terry by inches at the line. Don Franklin, he's sniffing down to the inside line off of turn number two. John Don Franklin in the 69, looking to the inside into turn number three, backed out of it. John Booten in car number 23, works the middle line. A little room off the uh, fourth turn, two laps to go. Tyler Terry shows the way. 
Tyler Terry on the outside. That's where his car wants to be. John Booten drifts up in two. He's sideways off turn number two. Tyler Terry gets a good run on the top of the racetrack. John Booten trying to stay underneath. A 23 car trying to stay down on the inside. Pushes up into turn number four. White flag is out. One lap to go. It's Tyler Terry by four feet. They hit the stripe with a four foot lead for the 44 of Tyler Terry. John Booten over at turn number two. Drifts a little bit high off the second turn. Josh Terry's in trouble. He's into the bunker. Here they come. It's going to be a drag race for the win. Who's it going to be? Off of turn number four. They go up right towards the wall. They touch. Down to the line. It's Tyler Terry by three feet. Terry wins it. Second goes to John Booten. Third goes to Don Franklin. Fourth, I believe, was Jason McClatchy. Rob is headed down trackside to talk with the winner, Tyler Terry. Tyler celebrating in style, finishing off the uh, rear tires on that number 44 car. Don Franklin did finish in third place. He just uh, will get the push off. I to talk with Tyler. Rob? All right. Tyler Terry getting the checkered flag tonight. Come on over here, Tyler Terry. Man, for much of this race, you were just dialed down on the inside of the racetrack, and you couldn't get to the top because there was someone at your door virtually the whole race. But you were able to get to the top on the restart, and that's where the car really wanted to be. I'm telling you, that was some of the best racing I've been a part of in a long time. That was awesome. Racing with my brother, racing with John. I mean, that was just unbelievable. That's what we come here for. Um, at one point, Tyler, over in turn two and down the back stretch, there were four cars who were trying to get the lead. After John bobbled over here in turn one, he, he really gave a pretty good opening to you guys. I saw him open the hole up, and I knew my brother was going to stick it in there and... and we came out good. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I got to thank all my sponsors. I got to thank Mike Christian and Brookfield Excavation, uh, Smithfield Discount Liquor and Wine, everybody that's helped us. It's been awesome. That was a heck of a race.